One of the many nuances in making a low resolution game is that smooth movements become difficult, and this can be particularly problematic with cameras. Given a camera can't be placed at a fraction of a pixel, small movements may appear jittery as each pixel is a significant amount of space, and movement can only be seen when your position hits the next integer along. But what if I told you, you could make it smooth? By taking manual control of rendering our final game frame, or the application surface as it's called in Game Maker, and making our camera view of the game one pixel larger than we need it to be, we can then utilize the full resolution of our game window, likely a much higher resolution than the game itself, to draw that one pixel larger game frame, offset by the camera's true position to give us a sub-pixel capable camera. And this screen here basically shows all of the steps. It's surprisingly simple to do. This assumes you have a camera object that moves with some kind of smoothing or at non-integer positions and sets the camera view position to its location. See my 4 minute camera tutorial to set up this part if you need to. Firstly, you want to make sure your camera view size is one pixel larger than your intended game resolution. I have a pretty extreme resolution of 160 by 90 here just to make things visually clear, so that's 161 and 91 in my case. Then in my camera objects create event, I resize the application surface to be one pixel larger than usual, and then I disable drawing the application surface automatically. Turning this off will mean we don't draw our game automatically anymore, so we'll have to do it ourselves, but that's what we want. When updating your camera's view position, we want to make sure it is pointing at a consistent integer to avoid weird rounding behavior and jitter from game entities inside our camera view, while our XY still tracks the real number, including the subpixel position. Now normally our game image is drawn to the actual screen just after the post draw event. The post draw event targets the back buffer which is the same canvas that the application surface is normally drawn to, the raw pixel space that makes up our game window, so this makes it the ideal event to draw our application surface manually. First of all we need to disable the normal blending behavior that's used when drawing to the application surface or we might get weird results with alpha blending. Just turn it off here and turn it on again at the end of the event. Then we work out the size of that one pixel buffer relative to our window size, so we divide our window size by the width of the game. So for example, at 1920 window width, our 160 pixel wide game would use 12 pixels per pixel of our window. Then we draw our application surface with draw surface ext. We pass in the application surface, obviously, and for x and y we use a frac to give us just the decimal component of our x and y. We subtract this from 0, 0 to offset the one pixel surface outside the room and multiply by that relative pixel size we just calculated. We stretch the surface to fill the window by passing that size as our x scale and y scale, and then just the default 0 rotation, white color blend, and 1.0 alpha. And that's it, you're now in manual control of your application surface and sneaking in some extra subpixels for your camera despite your low resolution game. This isn't necessarily always better depending on the game you're going for of course, but it's one of the nicer ways to combine modern technology with a retro aesthetic to give a nicer feel without harming the integrity of the art style. Thank you to all my patrons and thank you all for watching all the way to the end, I'll catch you all next time.